Welcome. You brought pillows? I brought pillows. Do you have hemorrhoids? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching your show. Yeah? I, I know what you're up to, you What see. am I up to? I saw last week Sean Penn looked like a head in a box, you know? He was... <laughs> he was tiny. President Obama, tiny. So, listen, I'm going to be on your level, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a, a good deal tall. All right, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I don't know what to say about that, but welcome. It's good to have you Thank here. Thank you. <laughs> Let me just stop you. Seriously, yes. is this going to muck up your camera angles? No, it it's okay? perfectly good. fine. We can good. handle it. We'll just pretend like uh, Kobe Bryant is here or something. <laughs> you know, uh, it's. I have to say, and I think maybe this is odd, it's weird to see you in regular clothes, and you look great, but Thank you. I am used to seeing you in that period garb. <laughs> and do you yeah. get that a lot, I would assume? Yeah, uh, well, yes, actually. I, I remember I went on a, a, a morning show with uh, Barbara Walters, uh -huh, yeah. and I was wearing jeans. And she literally kept tapping my knee, saying, you should not be wearing jeans. You should not be wearing <laughs> really? jeans. Really? Why? Yeah. Well, because she thought I should be wearing the full white tie and tails. <laughs> Which is why I'm wearing this now, because I don't want you touching my knees. <laughs> I won't touch you, don't worry. <laughs> Unless you want your knees touched, I will not touch your knees. Oh, but, go on. But Barbara... <laughs> go on. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Finally, Jim, Jimmy Kimmel has touched my knee. I was, it's <laughs> a lifelong dream for a lot of people. Do you like coming here to Los Angeles? Is it fun for you to come visit here? I do. I've, I've been here a few times over the years. What was the first time you came? The first time I came was to do a table read for a, 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 a sort of pilot for a show. Oh. And co uh, coincidentally, at the same time, I was, I was working on a, a project with a British producer, and she said, I'm staying with my great friend up in the hills. Um, why not come over for breakfast and we can talk through the script that we're working on together and... Uh, uh, before you go off to, to work. So I said, OK, so I got a car up there and pressed the buzzer on these gates, as, 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 as asked, and uh, the gates swung open and the, the housekeeper said, oh, please come in, your, your friend uh, Norma is uh, in the guest suite. Um, I'll just wait, wait in here, she'll be down in a minute, over in a minute. So I go in and I sit, I'm sitting in this, uh, walking, standing in this living room, and I look around and there's a... That's a Monet, uh, there's a Manet, there's a, is, is that a Picasso? I'm not sure, and I'm looking around and this... And then I go into, I sort of sneak into another room, and uh, there's a whole cabinet full of awards. I have absolutely no idea whose house I'm in. And I sort of sneak around another corner, and there's this ginormous uh, photograph of Michael Jackson's, you know, wow. sign saying, you know, lots of love to... And I couldn't read the writing. And, and then my friend Norma, she appears out of the guest suite and says, oh, hi, let's go and have breakfast and chat. And I said, no, forget that. Who's, who's flipping house am I in, you know? <laughs> And she says, uh, oh, 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 sorry, my great friend Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, and I said, you mean, you mean she's, she's here? Yes, it was her birthday yesterday, but she's having a lie-in because we stayed up late opening presents. So anyway, come in and just talk business. I couldn't talk business. I just sat there all through breakfast going, I'm in Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my, uh, that was my baptism wow, to, uh, that's to a, LA. Yeah, I mean, that's hard to top, I yeah, guess. Pretty you know, good. Where do you go good. from there? Yeah, anyway, uh, you know. Are good. you from an acting family? Is, a, are you, is it like theatre? No, well, right. I was very, very fortunate. My family loved going to the theatre uh -huh. and going to, you know, engaging with the arts. But, no, my family was medical. My parents met uh, at, uh, when my father was training to be a doctor and my mum was a nurse. But by the time I was growing up, she was... Um, well, she took a job when I was about ten. I mean, she'd given up being a nurse to bring up the kids and, and so on. And, but then she started doing a job filing in... In, in London, in an office, and so occasionally Dad and I would drop her off as, as she went off to work, and I'd go on errands with him. And then uh, uh, she retired, and many, many, many years later, I opened a newspaper, uh, a London newspaper, and there was a, a photograph of, of her office building, and it said, MI6 building to be sold for, for development, MI6 being the British equivalent of the CIA. And I rang her, and I said, Mum, this was your office building. Was it called Century House, your office building? And she said, yes, dear. And uh, I said, but that's where you went to do filing. And she said, yes, dear. I said, were you in MI6? And she said, I'm just going out to the garden to do some gardening. Wow. <laughs> and the strangest follow-up to that was... I mentioned this on a radio station in the UK, and a few days later, I got a phone call. <laughs> it sounds so surreal. From MI6. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> saying, from the, from the press office or from the PR department, saying we're, you know, we're trying to get the chaps and the girls to, uh, you know, we're trying to be a bit more transparent here and a bit more inclusive, and some of the chaps, you know, girls, they feel a bit lonely uh, sometimes because obviously the work they do is very, you know, protected. Uh, and we're having these lunchtime chats uh, from people from the outside who come in and talk about influences on 
their lives. And so I, I, they, they said, would you come along and talk about people who've influenced your life? And uh, so I did, and it was the strangest thing, going into this lecture theatre with about 100 people sitting there, literally with their little plastic boxes and their sandwiches, all working for the Secret Service, just, you know, having their lunch break, as I talked about people who'd influenced me, mainly my mum. And um, it was really peculiar. Did they tell you anything about what she did there? Well, that was, <laughs> that was the odd thing. At the end of it, and this was rather touching, at the end, this guy about my age came up and said, by the way, I worked with your mum. And this was... My mum had passed away a couple of years ago, and so this was a real strange connection with a, with a world I obviously never knew anything about. Yeah. And, uh, I said, look, obviously you're not going to... You know, I don't need to know, you know... I'm not going to ask what uh, my mum did here, but she, she always said she just, you know, she did filing, and that's fine. He said, well, yeah, yeah, she, I suppose... Yeah, she did do filing, yeah, but our department was, in, you know, back in the day, when I, he said when I first started, I was 18 years old, and she was sort of, you know, one of the senior people in the department, and, and we sort of had to organise all the intercepts that came in overnight and make sure they were get, you know, in the right order and got to the right desk at the right time. So, yeah, it was filing. But it was interesting filing. Your mom was a spy. <laughs> she wasn't a spy. She was. She was a she public servant. She was a spy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Uh... It's more fun if she was a spy. Wow. I'd love Very to mysterious. It. It Very was, exciting. You know, but it was. I was rather touched by this strange connection to that past. That yeah, she I had. would think so. Because she never, uh, she obviously, never talked about it. And she went to her grave. And I asked my dad after she passed away. You know, did she ever talk about that? And he said never. I never wow. Knew, I never knew. What she yeah, said. we don't talk about know. stuff in our house either. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know what my dad did for work, but he wasn't a spy. We just didn't... <laughs> now, the series, Downton Abbey, does the movie pick up where the series left off? Is that how it's going to work? Uh, well, the TV show uh, ended in, in 1926. And, 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 <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I mean, no, it ended in 2016, but it, the story finished right. in, in 1926, and the movie picks up in uh, about 18 months later. Yeah. I see. Oh, all right. Yeah, so it isn't one of those uh, TV shows that goes to movies that sort of moves to the South Pacific or something like right. that. Right. It's, it's still the story of the Crawley family and the people who live and work on the estate of Downton Abbey, um, and life is nudged on a bit. So it's, it's, um, it's just the, the same characters, most of the... nearly all the same characters, taking us on another little chapter of their story. Well, it's great to meet you. Great well, to have you here. Uh, the movie is called Downton Abbey, the movie. It opens at theatres tomorrow. Hugh Bonneville, everyone. We'll be right back with you tomorrow. tomorrow. I am Jimmy Kimmel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit subscribe and all your dreams will come true, assuming your dreams are to watch more YouTube videos.